Hello and welcome back to the team prep tournament group stage. This is um, once again going to be one of the matches by my one of my teammates, in this case Cruz Keen, playing against Emily FD. And uh, once again, the format of this tournament tournament is that we have eight boards here. Um, and three people on each team, so three matches with four games. Each match consists of one of the players picking two boards and the opponent picking two boards in a in a particular sequence. Um, so specifically, it looks like Emily FD is starting out here. So Emily will go first and pick the first kingdom. Then Cruz Keen will go first and pick a kingdom. Then Cruz Keen will go second and pick a kingdom. And then Emily will go second and pick a kingdom. Uh, they can't pick the kingdoms that were picked by their teammates in, 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 in the pr prior matches. So I've got kingdoms E and G grayed out here because those are the ones that I picked uh, when I played against Cirrus C. Um, as a warning, I just got my first COVID shot. Um, so I don't know. I, I feel fine right now, but I don't know if that's going to continue. I also have um, have another thing uh, that I'm going to need to do in a couple of hours. So hopefully the match will be done by then. But if I if it if it isn't, I will have to to cut this off a little early. All right. So they're going with the ah uh, yes, this highway board. Okay. Um, and way of the mouse is camel train. So uh, my experience on on this board was that while you can't get a ton of buys and like totally highway mega turn you can get close enough um so really, what i really want to do here is i want to thin down aggressively with bounty hunter um potentially cemetery um i want to get as many highways as possible and i want to probably train them although it's not necessarily the case that you need to do that i want to get um oh where's keen Opens Bounty Hunter nothing. I didn't notice if Cruise Keen had a 5-2. Um, I don't know why looking at the spreadsheet I thought was going to help me answer that question. Um, anyway, um, I want to get, you know, like three-ish Ducats. Um, I, I don't think you can really get by with um, fewer than two, but three might be okay. Um, four might also be okay. You have to be careful about the number of stop cards you have, of course because there's not really any draw here. Um, I mean, there is Herald, but there's not really like time for Herald um, too much. Like you might get a Herald or two at some point, but probably not. Cause like there's the, the gains are pretty limited. You're gonna wanna be like exiling, uh, as Emily has already done here, exiling highway with uh, camel mouse, and then um, like buying highways to get the highways off the mat. Um, so Cruz Keen takes the Ducats. Emily exiles another highway, so that's pretty... Wait, when did... Oh, oh, and bought a highway last turn, yeah. So pretty rough stuff here for, for Cruise King so far. Um, I would de Yeah, exile a state here, take a highway. All right. Um, could Cruise King have hit... Hi uh, Cruise King could not have bought highway last turn without... without uh, if they'd played... Uh, Bounty Hunter is Camel Train, unfortunately. So yeah, Cruise Keen pretty far behind so far here um, with the, the highway gaining. And unfortunately not going to be able to use that highway as Camel Train either. Emily here could uh, Bounty Hunter as Camel Train, yeah. Yeah, this is looking... This is looking real rough for Cruz Keen. Even if Cruz Keen gets the last two highways, I think Cruz Keen will have only four. I have maybe even only th no four. It would have four, but is not going to be able to get two highways here. Unfortunately, can get one highway by exiling Copper. Um, I believe yeah, yeah. Gonna have to do that. But yeah, this is this is looking pretty lost. If Emily takes the highway split seven three, that's it's really bad news. I didn't notice if Cruz Keen had a five two or not. Um but 
Um, I guess we can go back and look in the log. Oh, Cruise Queen did have a 5 2. Yeah, I like. Um, I actually like Emily's move of taking the Lurker. Um, mostly because it, like, you can play it as Camel Train. That's the. Uh, I don't know if we really talked about what to do on this board on a 5 2, and maybe that was an oversight. Um, on my part, I don't know if I ever actually got in a practice game that involved a 5-2. But I, I yeah, I like the I like the lurker to be able to get um extra camel trains. Like I think it's worth or camel train plays. I think it's it's generally like more gonna be more important in those early shuffles to be able to do that exiling than it is to like have an extra copper to be actually actually be able to buy one because like on a turn where you don't buy one but you exile one you're basically gonna end up with as many anyway. Um now oh so Emily did get another bounty hunter at some point. I didn't really notice that happen. There is still a possibility that you know, like Cruise Key could win here basically just on the on the strength of like a sneaky pile out. Um I've like in my own testing of this kingdom, I uh I found that that was like a real possibility if you, even if you lost the highway split. The 7 3 is pretty bad. I don't think I ever actually saw that split be that bad. Yeah, I think I misspoke earlier. I think I was misremembering um, about like the heralds. Like, you definitely. You can definitely end up with like a, a a good number of heralds in your deck. The thing about the heralds is that, um, like there's a potential pile out threat, right, with highways and ducats. But depending on like the sequencing, so like they've, I think they've probably underinvested in ducats to this point. Um, the ducats are pretty important. Like getting that plus buy is pretty important. I don't actually don't know. I guess Emily probably is the one with two ducats now. Um, but yeah, like you, it's it's hard to. Um, it's hard to do a whole lot here without uh, ducats in your deck because, like, you know, one buy or two buys just kind of isn't enough. So Cruise King, I think, definitely needs another ducat. Although it's it's a little bit, you know, it's a little bit of a waste. But cemetery, hmm. I don't think I like that. I mean, it is it does it is nice to, to thin out the coppers. Um, wait, only trash two coppers instead of three? I don't get that. But no, I mean, I think Cruise King definitely needs an, another buy. Interesting. Emily may be looking to push piles here. Anyway, so what I was saying about the like the Herald and Ducat thing is like the, if you get more Ducats early, then that presents like a, a larger pile out threat, which then makes the, the Herald pile not, you know, like shrink as much. Like here, because there's seven Ducats left, not only is that pile higher, but you know, there's between the two of them they have fewer buys. So nobody's really threatening a pile out. Now that Emily just took two Ducats, however. So that puts Emily at Four Ducats, so five gains, I believe. Plus, you can, of course, um, you can Camel Train uh, Heralds into Exile just to, like, get the gains to pile out, even if you can't actually, um, like, get them off the mat. It doesn't matter if you're you're going for pile out. But yeah, so the Heralds are kind of, like, lower, like, than I've seen them get um, normally before somebody piles out because of the... The lack of ducat gains. Exile's a, a ducat, huh? Okay, I don't think that's safe. 
I mean, I guess Emily does need to get some points to be able to win. Wow, Emily hadn't exiled any copper to this point? That's crazy. All right, well, the good news for Curious Keen is that Emily did not uh, draw very well this turn. I don't know if that's unexpected. Given that Emily hadn't uh, exiled any copper, although, you know, there, she, she did presumably trash. I, I know she trashed with the, the last couple of Ducats, probably trashed with the ones before that too. Goes for the training. Okay, training on highways. Yeah, that's that'll generate a lot of money. Um, which honestly, at this point, I'm not sure that Emily really needs because you know, plenty of highways. Humble Castle. That's interesting. Um, I mean, it's a way to score a few points without um, lowering piles in an important way, and it's also a way to like it's something you can bounty hunt for for coins. But I don't know. I don't really like the pickup there for Emily. I think Gruskin is still not threatening to pile out. I think I. Probably wouldn't have actually scored as Emily there. I think I would have just. I might have even just taken a Herald. Well, maybe maybe she couldn't afford Herald. Uh, had played one, two, three highways. So three coins, six coins, seven coins. Yeah, should have been able to buy a Herald there. All right, so meanwhile, Cruise Keen draws deck, but only has one Ducat? Wait, what? Oops. Sorry. Got a bookmark there. Um, somehow. Actually, I don't even know what, what, I, what happened there. Um, I didn't click on a bookmark. Anyway, uh, I was trying to look at Kreeskeen's... Oh, yeah. So Kreeskeen left the Ducats exiled. That, that is very strange to me. I mean, I guess Kreeskeen was able to draw this turn and maybe wouldn't have been able to draw without the, the Ducats. So there's some, maybe there's something to that. But And when you've only got three highways, I guess with the, the lack of... the relative lack of discounts that you've got, maybe you actually need to hold off on those Ducats a little bit. Um, because... Like, the, the extra buys aren't actually going to go that far. But I would be pretty surprised if Emily can't win the game here um, by exiling some Heralds or Ducats uh, with Camel. I, I mean, I think probably, yeah, Emily's surely got the win in hand, right? Already ha looking at five buys and then three camel exiles. Well, yeah, that is totally unnecessary, but Emily should still have the win in hand by being able to, like, exile Herald Herald and then buy two Ducats in three provinces. Buying five provinces would also be pretty winning. Um, if Emily isn't looking at the camel line... But looks like Emily is looking at the camel line. Yeah. So I think um I think the first player advantage definitely helped Emily there, but I also think that um Kruskin would have been better served um, getting a Lurker or even a possibly a Ducat on turn one. Getting a Ducat is annoying because uh, you like aren't trashing Copper, obviously. Um, and you know, it's it's hard to thin all the coppers out of your deck as it is.
So I think I think I would have preferred the lurker and use that to to as, as camel train. Okay, right, so they're going for kingdom A. Oh, they've already got it pasted in here. Um, right. This is the um the old witch board. So I played this board on as second player, and it did not go well for me. Um, I do think the first player advantage is substantial here. Uh, so on this one, you really want to like get a lot of peasants and get a lot of old witches. Um, old witches, obviously, for draw. Peasants, you want disciples and you also want soldiers. Soldier makes a ton of money once you play a whole bunch of old witches. And, you know, additional soldiers as well. Um, and you've got Villa for plus buy and to, you know, decollide your... Well, decollide isn't the right word, but I mean, like, you know, you can... You can just stack old witches and then, you know, still be able to play uh, through, obviously, because of Villa. Um, there's also a way of the goat to thin um, when you've got Necropolis. So you can, like, start thinning uh, before you even shuffle. So just a lot of really nice stuff. Um, there is Guardian to block the old witch attack. Um, and the soldier attack. So, okay, Cruz Keen does not collide Acropolis with Overgrown Estate, which can be pretty nice, but um, can at least trash Hubble here. Grabs a peasant. I, I would go. I would probably go Delve Peasant here. That's what I did when I played this. It did not work out super well for me because my peasants collided and I did not hit five, but. Okay, Cruise King going for the double delve. That does have the advantage um, that you can you're more you are more likely to hit five. It has this advantage that you're not getting as many peasants up the line. Cruise King should probably <sighs> Trashing Necropolis is a little awkward. Um because it's nice to use as goat, but I might still do it. It's, this is an unfortunate hand for sure. Like, I would much rather be seeing Overgrown Estate here than Necropolis. Okay, so Cruz Keen elects not to trash. There was no way for Cruz Keen to trash and afford... Uh, trash a Copper and a Four Old Witch, so... You know, it's, it's fair enough. So here, I like Delve Peasant for... Cruise Keen, that's the choice. Unfortunately, no trash again. Be able to buy Old Witch. But what can you do? Certainly, Old Witch is the buy here. Okay, so this is this is a nice hand. Um, actually, I wonder if should Cruz Keen have held on to Overgrown Estate there and trashed it with Soldier, figuring very likely to draw into another Copper, and you can buy Old Witch anyway. I think that's actually what what he should have done. <laughs> Whoa, Villa, no, no, why do you want Villa? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, Old Witch, you want Old Witch? You don't need Villa. You need Old Witch? No, 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 no. I very, very strongly disagree with that decision. Here I would actually be tempted not to play the Necropolis initially and to just play the Old Witch um, 
and save Necropolis to trash with, but I, I mean, I think it's fine either way. Definitely buy a villain now. Whoa, what? 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 Now you, but, but you had a, did, but, what? <sighs> you had a fugitive and a peasant. I don't understand. <laughs> I, yeah, I really do not understand that. I'm just utterly baffled. Bought the villa just to get that peasant and then didn't play it. I mean, the previous shuffle bought a villa to get the, that peasant. Big oof. Yeah, Emily looks pretty far ahead to me. I don't like that order either. I want to play Old Witch first so that I get more money from Soldier. Yeah, this looks totally lost. I don't really know how much of the problem here was that sequence of decisions that I objected to so strenuously and how much of it was Emily successfully opening with two peasants. Let's see. So turn three, Emily plays a peasant, get, buys an old witch. Turn four, Emily plays Necropolis and gets another peasant. So got got an old witch. Um, which was more than I was able to do when I played this board and opened with two peasants. I, I, um, I actually whiffed on old witch completely in, in the first shuffle and that was just really damning all right emily buying a gold there i like to see that that i don't think that makes any sense um piles are very low right now uh and the most important thing is to set up you know like for the end now cruise keen is a bunch of points down so you know it's going to be difficult like for him to draw through all the curses and you know, make a comeback here, but whoa. I, I what the, what do you do? What? <laughs> Why? Play your draw. Oh gosh. I feel like Emily is taking a few more peasants than is really necessary here, but it, it probably won't matter. I don't understand Kruskeen's use of Villa here in this game at all. I don't think any of the times that Kruskeen has bought Villa, that, it, that they used it in the way that I would want to use it. And by Guardian, please. And, um, okay. And then, of course, there were the times where you will, I guess it was just the one time where Cruise King didn't buy Villa where it really should have. But yeah, I, th I think that the, the Villa usage here has been very strange. All right, this should probably be the winning turn for Emily. 
If I were Emily, I would be discipling Villa right now um, to just pile them out. Okay, well, Emily did not do that, but has three buys and is going to get a whole bunch of money from all these. Oh, it can still... Nope. Okay. <laughs> And Emily doesn't even need points. Like, literally just discipling a couple of villas would, would have just about done it right there. Disciple, disciple, soldier, peasant? Okay, whatever. It, it doesn't matter. Okay, Emily choosing not to win the game. Probably that's fine, although I don't understand if you are going to buy four provinces, why you don't use peasant to trash a curse there or or an estate, considering uh, you ended up with a coin and a buy that you're not using. Emily, maybe Emily didn't math that out. I don't know, but either way, it doesn't make sense to me. I mean, I, this game is, is well over. It's... There's no way Cruzkeen can have a turn like that. And while it was possible for Emily to do that clearly hasn't happened. Oh, I guess it didn't update the results. That. Okay, I guess Emily did actually dud here. I mean, not in a way that is going to matter too much. Actually, Emily could choose to, like, peasant trash overgrown estate and hope to draw into a draw card by Villa and then keep going. Let's not choose to do that. Well, could still choose to buy Villa. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Pretty close to being able to end it, but not quite there. I understand all these peasant buys. I continue not to understand all these peasant buys, I guess I should say. But hardly is going to matter. You could easily see Cruz Keen failing to hit four here for Villa. <laughs> I don't know how many curses are down in there in those last three cards. Oh, okay. Of course, you buy Villa. I mean, well, okay, Dutchie's not going to save you either. <laughs> like, you buy Villa, the game's going to end. You don't buy Villa, the game's going to end. So, you know, like, whatever. Just disciple the Villa! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Emily looks to be a coin short of ending the game. <laughs> and Cruise King certainly doesn't have a turn. Wow, went for the witch disciple. That was you could have just discipled soldier and bought the villa. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Cruz King can't even like take Wait, why why did Oh Guardian? <laughs> okay. Surely Surely Emily will buy the last villa. <laughs> And put us all out of our misery. Okay. Well, 
Well, that was unpleasant. I mean, they split the the old witches, but Emily definitely got things up and running a lot faster. And on the in the in terms of the the peasant line, like Kruzkeen did end up with two disciples, but and two soldiers, but it, it was all pretty late coming. They do not have spec chat off, it, it occurs to me. I guess I can just refrain from saying anything. So what have we got left? So A is just picked. Dang, it failed to be consistent with my color usage. Um, what was the one, what was game one? This one. All right, so we have D. Which is which one? Oh, the gear money board. Okay. Right. <laughs> this was a this was an interesting one for me. So Um, I did end up winning this game as player one um, when my opponent picked it as player two, but really because I think my opponent made a mistake. Well, we both did, but my opponent's mistake was worse, I would probably say. Um, so my opponent kept an estate around. Well, I guess I should talk about the board first. So like I say, I mean, it's gear money. Like you get three gears, you get a gold, and then you start buying Enclave. And meanwhile, Goat is like thinning out your estates and coppers and making you very reliable. Um, my opponent kept an estate as second player, which put me in a pretty rough spot. Um, then, like, I started on the Enclaves. And at one point, they did not follow, which I think was a mistake. I think as player two, it's generally not going to make sense to... Oh, that's a really good draw for Emily here. To set aside two coppers, um, get to trash, buy another gear, and then next turn you should be able to hit six. Anyway, um, Cruise Keen, unfortunately, not with such a good draw because doesn't find a gear. Despite opening double gear. Boy, we are just not having a good time here. What? Where's the trash? Oh! <laughs> Where is the trash? Yeah, so Emily gets a gold. Cruise Keen does not. It's to set aside gear estate by silver. Emily, if Emily can enclave here, okay. That isn't going to happen. That's good news. Emily should set aside gear, trash estate. No, no, Emily's hanging on to the estate. I don't think Emily should do that. Um, but and Cruise Keen has two estates. It's like Cruise Keen intends to hang on to both of them, which I don't really like. But I mean, if Cruise Keen hangs on to an estate, then as Emily, you really don't have much reason to hang on to a second estate. Anyway, Emily can enclave here while setting aside gear copper. But didn't? Oh, set aside two. No, you don't set aside two coppers. You always set aside gear. 
unless I misread and Emily had already hadn't played the gear. I'm, I'm pretty sure Emily would kind of played a gear. Yeah, Emily could have set aside gear and did not. Cruise Keen did not even get to Enclave. Oh boy. Well, I mean, trash those coppers, man. And leaving two estates in your deck is, is pretty dubious to me, too. I totally lost the thread of trying to talk about what happened in, when I played this. So what happened was my opponent had kept an estate and I had not. I, I whiffed on gold on turn four um, and had to buy silver. They got a gold. But then I did hit Enclave on turn five. Um... And then, so as the game progressed, so you know, I was first player, so I enclave first. They enclave first. If we if we ping pong, then at the end, like you know, we have all the enclaves. And then if we ping pong provinces, my opponent buys the last province and they win because they have the one state advantage. And if I like try to change the order somehow, then I lose because I'm first player and I'm buying you know like the last province into a tie or something like that. Um, but my opponent actually bought a province first. Which meant that if I had started buying provinces, I would have been the one buying the last province with an extra enclave that would have given me a two-point win. Unfortunately, so I, they bought province, I bought province, then they bought enclave, and then I bought enclave. What I should have done was buy province and just try to hold the lead. Um, but instead what happened was we got down to four provinces and I bought a salvager. And my opponent followed with the salvager instead of buying province, which was a mistake on their part because... That set up a situation where then I bought a province, there were three left, they bought a province, and then I salvaged province and bought province and won. I would not expect to see that happening here, but Emily had to buy a gold? That's weird. Well, now Cruz Keen has the opportunity to make up the, the deficit. Looks like Cruz Keen, while I was yammering, Cruz Keen did finally trash one of those estates. Um, so yeah, Cruise King can enclave here and even things up. And should. So now that that's happened, this game is probably actually a lot less interesting than it was. Emily goes for province. Cruise Keen should follow. The side gear gold. Emily can set aside double gold. It's amazing how reliable these decks end up being. I'm shocked. I didn't pay attention to how that happened, but I'm shocked that Emily was unable to to enclave or province that one turn. Um, I maybe it has to do with like not setting aside the gear at some point. I I do think it's you pretty pretty much 100 percent of the time want to set aside gear. Like there were there was a situation late in the in. The, the time that I played it where I didn't because of the salvager thing like I wanted to I ended up setting aside a province so that I could salvage it because I knew that I didn't have another one that I wasn't going to be able to draw another one um, but, but yeah in general um, you want to be setting aside gear and the reason for that is not just because like oh well you know like you might you know, setting aside gear versus setting aside like gold or silver or copper or whatever, like, you know, it, it, like the amount of money you're going to generate the next turn. But it's also because it continues to cycle you so you can continue to draw your gear so you can continue to set aside. Being able to do that on a consistent basis um, is really valuable. And because there's you're not playing with plus buy, you don't really care if... Okay, so now... Oh, Emily... Oh, no, never mind. Yeah, there's two provinces left. And yeah, so Cruise King has to follow with Enclave, fortunately. Uh, 
Not going to be a very interesting end game here. Just going to be by the last province and tie it up. Yeah. So that was a lot of uh, excitement for not a lot of outcome, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, and you can see that the, the decks are end up nearly identical. The difference is the silver that Cruz Keen had to buy versus the gold that Emily had to buy. Um, I would I am curious to know whether or would be curious to, to go look back and see whether Cruz Keen could have gotten away with keeping that other estate. The thing is, like, once you start enclaving, an estate or two isn't going to make that big of a difference. But before you do, like, and you need to get there the first time, um, having those estates is really bad. So, like, not trashing them at the beginning of the game, you know, is uh, not recommended. But, like, if you get to the point where you've hit the first enclave and you hit, you know, the second enclave and you've got the two estates in your deck... I don't know, maybe you're meant to keep them. I never really found myself in that situation, but um, I could believe this board is a mess, an absolute mess. So um, we got multiple brutal attacks here. We got Mountebank and Ghost Ship. Um, there's, the, the thinning is Forge, Necromancer, and Rats. And then there's University for gains. There's um, Groundskeeper can do some scoring. But basically, um, colonies are missing. That's true. That is true. Yeah, this is... Colonies. And then I guess I should check out this for our future consideration. Um, what was I saying? Well, so you can draw actually draw a bit, despite the ghost ship, because you got Workers Village plus Ghost Ship, and you know, you can line those up somewhat. You can use Necromancer as Zombie Apprentice. Um I think the the big key here, so probably what happened is like when you change the um, when you change the the cards that you've selected, then it doesn't preserve your it resets your colonies and shelter settings, but it doesn't like show you that it's reset them. It still shows you whatever they were set to last. I think it's a UI bug. Anyway, um. What I found was that if you can hit Forge early, um, then that makes a huge difference because, like, even though Forge seems pretty bad against Ghost Ship, you can generally find ways to draw enough to, like, have a decent sized Forge. And having a decent sized forge is like just like so valuable here with the how brutal the attacks are. Because it's not just like you have all this junk in your deck, you know, with the mountain bank and all that. It's also the fact that you um wow, opens rats. Whoa. Opens potion. Well, that's bold too. Um although fortunately Cruise King can afford mountain bank. Anyway, um so it's not, you know, obviously you have all the junk coming in from the mountain bank, and then you also have the ghost ship, which is forcing you to, like, top deck that junk and, like, get through it more slowly. So forging it with, uh, with forge is just super, super good. Anyway, so yeah, my experience with rats was, I don't know, like, there were times I thought it was working where you, you like, trash the rats with Necromancer, and then there were other times where I thought it wasn't. The fact that... Emily has now two rats and one necromancer. We'll see what balance she's able to strike, but I 
I, I ended up coming down on the side of I don't want um, to... Wait, what? Wait, why is Cruz Keen not... Wait, what the... Groundskeeper? What the heck? Where's Mountebank? <laughs> what? Why has nobody gotten a, a mountebank? Ay yeah yeah. Okay. Grounds what groundskeeper isn't doing anything right now. Groundskeeper's first five is so so baffling, I don't understand. I, I'm sure I didn't say anything. Like, oh no. Anything to suggest that was a good idea? I hope I didn't. I believe that's Cruise King's only rats. Cruise King gained another necromancer. It's all very confusing. I would just play Zombie Mason at this point. Um, I mean, you could play rats, actually, and trash the estate. Yeah, I think that, that would be good. Oh, you can get Forge! Yes! Okay, this is good. <laughs> um, but please gain a Mountebank. Please <laughs> gain a Mountebank. <laughs> Please gain a mountain bank. Uh. Or go ship, but I would rather have a mountain bank. Why? Why? No. <laughs> I I just Okay, well the good news is it looks like Emily has way too many rats and is not going to have much of a deck pretty soon. <laughs> okay, go ship. That's that's something. Can't believe we're skipping Mountebank, but I wonder if Cruz Keen was thinking, oh, Emily is getting rats, so I don't want Mountebank. I would not, I do not think that's, uh, that's like a sensible thing to think, but I, I guess it's possible that that's, that's the thought process. Gets another groundskeeper. Okay. If I were Emily, I would apprentice, I would, uh, or at least consider apprenticing the ghost ship. So now Cruise King could consider masoning a card off the top, but I think I would rather just Necromancer trash the rats and, and draw Apprentice trash, I mean. Another groundskeeper. All right. Well, I mean, I guess at some point, if, you know, if Emily destroys her own deck with rats, then at some point the groundskeepers are going to win the game for Cruz Keen. I just I'm still, like, totally baffled by we don't want Mountebank. Okay, this is a good forge. You can get a five cost. I mean, it's only three cards, but... Kind of expecting... Oh, now we're getting Mountebank. Okay. <laughs> well, this is going to be the first time Emily's even played Mountebank, so... I... Hmm... Think about that Necromancer. I guess Spy is probably fine. Oh, or Rats. I would trash the Potion at this point. Oh, we're getting another University. Okay. I want a worker's village more than I want a university by this point. I mean, gaining the fives is good, but like, 
Worker's Village is what's going to actually let you draw if you have some ghost ships. Okay, you don't need to hit six. I mean, you can top deck the groundskeeper. That doesn't matter. But I think I'm top. Yeah, I think I'm top deck. I think I'm top decking groundskeeper copper here. Just playing mountebank. No. Okay. Hopefully, Cruise King didn't put themselves in a position where they're going to get hit four rather than five. I don't know what that order was. Second Mountebank play for Emily. Gosh, there could have been so many Mountebank plays by now for Cruz Keen. <laughs> well, I want Ghost Ship more than I want Groundskeeper for Cruz Keen, but... I mean, actually, I, what I really want to do in this game in general is my, I want Mountebank to be both of my first two fives. But I mean, we're probably past the point where that's good. Duchy. What? Piles aren't that low? Obviously, actually, maybe it's not obvious you did. No, it is obvious. Takes the flag. Okay, now we're going to have flag wars. Good times. Well, I think Kruskeen has the university advantage, so... Ugh. Oh, it's not going to help this turn. Top takes three rats. <laughs> oh, boy. Yolo rats? No. <laughs> okay. I would just... Hmm. What top deck forge groundskeeper here? I guess that's fine. Takes the flag. First, the flag, you know, is pretty sad against Ghost Ship. I mean, it helps a little bit because you get more information, but. Emily's deck actually looking relatively thin. I guess that's what happens when you don't get Mountebanked and you get rats. I mean, the. Like, the rats themselves aren't thinning the deck, but the necromancer trashing them is. Emily doesn't have the forge, though, which is really good for Cruise Keen, because forge would be really good for Emily. Actually, Emily can get forged this turn. I would... Definitely have top decked the forge here as Cruise Keen. I don't. Cruise Keen is not going to get a good forge this turn. I would. I would play. I would certainly play Mountebank and not forge. But yeah, I mean, I want to be able to find an opportunity to play the forge. Top decking it. Oh well. Yeah, despite getting the forge, Cruise Keen is getting the worst of the the worst end of this, I think, basically because of not investing in Mount and Ghost Ship, which I mean is not terribly surprising. I thought maybe that the rats were gonna be choking Emily enough that 
um, that Chris Keen could still manage, but looks like not. And, and and Emily is very consistently getting Necromancer, Apprentice, Trash, Rats, which is, I mean, a, as much draw as you can get on this board, so. She uses not to Rats that estate, which is interesting. Yeah, this is looking... Pretty lost for Cruz Keen. Just those early groundskeepers were just so baffling. And slowly but surely, despite all the rats, Emily is pulling away because Emily is actually playing the groundskeepers now. We just take a couple workers villages here. Oh yeah, you never mind. Go ship right. Makes more sense. You gotta top, top deck the groundskeeper. Like it doesn't do you any good this turn. You're gonna do like play groundskeeper by an estate for two points. That's not gonna help you. And honestly, Emily may be thin enough at this point that there's no real dud risk for her. If I were Emily, I would actually rats the duchy. <laughs> like, lowers piles. Kind of sort of gets rid of a stop card. You don't need the points. You are going to buy an estate. Okay. Well, that's not going to do anything. Yeah, this should, game should be ending any minute now. With, I mean, Emily doesn't have very many universities, and Cruz Keen probably has too many. Not totally sure what the split is there, but I think Cruz Keen needed more workers' villages, fewer universities, most likely. I mean, the the, the of course the big problem was the. Investing in groundskeepers early, as I've said many times. In a way, this the, what Emily is doing is playing the deck that I tried to play with um, when I tried to play with rats. But I think I think the reason it's working um, is because Cruz Keen isn't didn't invest in the attacks. Um, like if if Cruz Keen gets Mountebank going early and gets Ghost Ship going early, I mean, yeah, like the rats will trash the junk, but the the rats themselves are junk. It's the thing. So, well, that did not go well for us. Um, I will say, I think, um, I think Emily played pretty well. Um, 
like I'm trying I, I I did not see a whole lot of glaring mistakes in Emily's play um the gold buy the biggest thing was like the gold buy in the old witch game and like not piling out in the old witch game none of that really mattered though like that game was already sewn up by the the, the point at which Emily made those mistakes so it was more like little stuff than like big stuff um yeah i think overall i mean emily just came better prepared um which i mean i will say you know like we ha um both of my teammates are european so we had more trouble probably than average um the average team trying to schedule times to practice together and i think that has hurt us significantly compared to the um compared to the other teams um i volunteer to be on a european team because i was thinking like oh, i keep kind of weird hours anyway but it turns out i keep weird hours in the wrong direction <laughs> so like I, I they needed somebody who was uh, an, like an early morning person rather than a um late night person to do it and that's not me so Unfortunately, um, I think the the lack of the relative lack of preparation has shown throughout these. Like I've, I really have not played boards with Cruz Keen very much at all. I've m mostly had to rely on like, you know, playing them and then like writing out my thoughts and you know like hoping that Cruz Keen gets some value out of that. So I think, you know, it, I, I I that's why I keep wondering like if I you know have l led Cruz Keen astray is because the, um. You know, like, if I say something about a board and then we don't play it together, like, there's a, you know, some chance that what I'm saying gets misinterpreted um, or that, like, I don't say, like, I, I, like, don't fully express the thought and, like, I, I there's, like, an assumption built into what I'm saying that, it, that needed to be explained that I, you know, that I don't explain it and then that becomes, um you know, an oversight. Like if I said like, oh, I want, you know, in this board, like I, I want, you know, to score with groundskeepers. Like I know that I don't mean, and I, I mean, I did, I did say that originally and then I kind of backed off of that position, but because I was, look, when I played the board out, it mostly ended up in pileouts. Um, but uh, in any case, what, um, if I say, you know, I want to score with groundskeepers, like I know that I don't mean pick up groundskeepers right off the bat because that doesn't like, do anything early in the game the groundskeepers don't do anything i want to get the mountain bank i don't want to get the ghost ship but if i don't actually say that explicitly then somebody might misunderstand what i'm getting at and think oh well that doesn't make sense to me but okay you know this person has you know tried this out and they're like high rated or whatever like i'll you know see if you know i'll, I'll do what they said and then it, you know um i don't know if that's actually if that's actually what happened but you know like that sort of thing is is certainly a possibility and i and i just think looking at our results i'm, I'm inclined to think that 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 in general we're, we're we're suffering from that um so if i ever play this again i'm gonna want to try to or, or if they run another tournament like this and i sign up for it again i will hopefully be able to get on a team that i have better scheduling with um i mean i've enjoyed the 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 opportunities i've had to play with my teammates they're both like uh fun to play with fun to talk to and you know I, i've liked having them as teammates like this is not really like a complaint about them it's just like unfortunately i think we're at a disadvantage from that standpoint um so yeah i guess and I guess you know, I'm trying to. I, I was also trying to think about like when I talked about this board. Did I even say like, oh yeah, it's really important to get Mountain Bank? Like maybe I didn't, right? Because I would just think, well, obviously it's important to get Mountain Bank, right? Like everybody knows that, but maybe not everybody does know that, and you know. So, um, in any case, uh, that will do it for this one. Uh, thanks for watching. I will probably, well, probably by the time anybody, but. My teammates see this. Uh, I will also have uploaded my, uh, Mort's match if I get the chance to commentate that. I don't know if I will or not. I'll have to check my work schedule, but um, I'm hoping to anyway. So either way, thanks for watching, and until next time.